YouTube. All right, you've got a new project today, once again, on the Firebird. Seems like we're always doing something on the Firebird. So today's project is a kind of a long story and it's a, a against my better judgment story. Uh, I've been perfectly happy with my Rally 2 wheels I've had on the Firebird for years. They look good. Uh, I recently repainted them. I wasn't terribly happy with the the gray. I used a little bit too light of a gray. It should have been more of a charcoal, uh, closer to black, but without being actual black. This has an actual blue to it. It's a lot of work painting these wheels and masking them, so I haven't felt like tearing them back off and redoing it again. And the other day, I'm on Facebook. Well, I guess about a week ago, I'm on Facebook. I'm just scrolling through, and I'm one of my Car Camaro and Firebird groups. Boom, up pops a set of um, American Racing Vector wheels. And it's with the bolt spacing for General Motors cars, which is uh, 4.75 inches. And I've always been a big Dukes of Hazard fan, General Lee fan. And if you don't know, those are the wheels that the General Lee had. They look really cool. They're considered a, a turbine wheel. Uh, they're real stout, aluminum, cool looking wheel. And I, I live in Southeast Michigan. The guy selling them was in Wisconsin. The price was right. It's a pretty long drive. It's about a, almost a 12 hour round trip, but I decided I had to have these wheels. And I drove all the way out to Wisconsin and I bought the wheels and I brought them home. And they are, they're 15 by eight and a half wide, which I was a little concerned that they might be too wide but I thought it might look cool. This might stick out the sides on the wheel, on the car a little bit. You know, instead of being recessed in like these are, I thought they were gonna stick out a little bit. So I'm gonna pop up some pictures and you'll be able to see what it ended up looking like. Long story short, it did not look good. It was all about the back spacing. This thing looked like a go-kart with the wheels sticking way out. And then the tires that came on the wheels, they were undersized, they were 235. 60 15s so they were kind of a small sidewall it didn't look right so i immediately decided i'm going to sell those wheels and just be done with this experiment well thank you facebook algorithms thought better of that idea and facebook pops up in my feed a set of american racing vector 15 by 7s in gm bolt spacing great all right, well, I messaged this guy. Um, again, I'm in Michigan, this guy's in Indiana, and he's got the wheels. He says that they're in good shape, that the wheels are in good shape, tires are in good shape, and he said he would be willing to trade me straight up for the, the set of eight and a half inch rims. Um, I figured, well, all right, these eight and a half aren't doing me any good. They're gonna sit here until they sell, and this guy's willing to trade. Let's do it. So drive all the way down to Indiana, pick up the wheels, bring them back home with me. Of course, when I get there, it turns out that the wheels are not exactly a match set. There's three originals, um, the original style. I'll show you the difference here. So when it comes to these American racing vector wheels, the old school original ones from back whenever they were manufactured, I don't know if it was the 70s or 80s or what, They've got a rough cast finish and they've got a machined lip around this edge right here. So a rough cast finish and a machined lip. They're just a stout looking tough wheel that came on the General Lee. Or not, obviously not came on the General Lee. The General Lee was made up for a TV show, but that's what was on the General Lee. So three of those wheels were like that. The fourth wheel looks like this. No machined edge and a smooth finish instead of a rough cast finish. So it turns out this particular one, even though it's the same size, it looks about the same, it's close. It's, uh, it's considered a special edition 50th anniversary wheel, so it's not exactly the same. On most people's cars, no problem. I'm really particular, kind of a perfectionist. So I ended up, uh, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. The guy does have, the fourth matching wheel, but the holes were whomped out. The lug nut holes were whomped out from uh, using incorrect lug nuts. So the holes are oversized. 
and I didn't take the wheel when I was there against my better judgment. So he's gonna ship it to me and I'm gonna see if I can fix those holes. Now, I bolted the, the wheels up to my car. Here, I'll post some pictures so you can see what it looked like. Um, they look pretty cool, but just plain with the all, all silver and gray finish. So just like the General Lee head and like American Racing sells now, I'm gonna paint the recessed area. So I'm gonna paint the recessed area uh, like a satin black, which is what American Racing sells now. I thought about a gunmetal gray, but I didn't think it would offset enough. So I'm gonna paint them, paint them black. I think I'm gonna leave this wheel alone and see if I can fix that fourth one. But just to start, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get started on one of these old originals. So I'm gonna wash it up real good. And then I'm just gonna mask off the, the machine parts or the, the smooth parts that I wanna say silver. And then I'm just gonna hit them with some black satin paint. I'm not even gonna mess with primer or sanding or any of that stuff. It's more just an experiment to see how it looks. And then I'm gonna throw them up on the car. The tires that came on these are just okay. I, I might end up switching the tires that are on the wheels that are on the existing car and put them on those and see how that goes. So anyway, we're gonna get started. We're gonna wash these wheels, mask them off, paint them, see how they turn out. Here right, we go. So now I got the wheel washed up real good. Gonna mask it. So the way we're gonna mask it, I've shown this before in a prior video. Gonna take a piece of plastic. I got some drop cloth here from the hardware store. You wanna cut a square, just a little bit bigger than the tire. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay it out over top of the wheel like this. Then you're gonna find the center spot and you're just gonna get a pinch in the center spot, pull it up. All right, so like I was saying, you find the middle part, you pinch it, you pull it out, and then you make a tube. Then you take the pinch part, you hold it in over the middle of the wheel, and you find about where the valve stem is. Then when you find that spot, you just hold like one hand here, use a pair of scissors, cut it off, doesn't need to be perfect, but it helps to have a, a pretty clean cut. Okay. So then what you end up with is a hole right around the size of the rim, a little bit smaller than the rim with enough plastic to overlap the tire. You're gonna lay that down on top of the rim. Then it helps to start stepping on the rim to push it down away, or step on the tire, to push it down away from the rim a little bit. And while you're doing that, you're gonna tuck in the plastic between the rim and the tire. And there you go. Just by stepping on the tire, push the tire down away from the rim a little bit. You tuck the plastic in and you are all masked up. You can paint that wheel without getting any overspray on the tire, nothing to it. Then it's just a matter of when you want it to be done, you step on the rim, pull the plastic out. Easy peasy. By far the best way of masking off a tire with the, the, the wheel still on the tire. Okay, I got the wheel all masked off with regular old masking tape. So I'm just gonna hit it with some black, uh, satin black paint. I'm not even gonna mess with primer. It's already got rough edges. And this is just a test run to see how this goes anyway and see if I like the look or if I'm just gonna turn around and sell these. So I'm gonna hit these with black, um, satin black paint. But I am gonna try one experiment. So I've heard, of using when you've got lines like this that you don't want to mask with tape and they're small lines using chapstick and you just run chapstick on the edges that you don't want paint on paint over them and then just wipe it off um i'm not sure if you get contamination or if it's possible to get total coverage with the chapstick i'll bet that it doesn't come out exactly perfect so that's why i masked the whole wheel except for this one little area just gonna try that as a, as a test run and see how it performs. It's, you know, it's an idea, it's something to experiment with. Worst case scenario, I hit the whole wheel with paint remover and hose it off, no biggie. Shot the wheels with some uh, black satin spray paint. Here it is. I think it looks pretty darn sharp. Gonna let the paint cure up. I am gonna try it out a moment of truth here and I'm gonna wipe off the area that I did the chapstick and just see what happens. Well, okay, it didn't come off completely smoothly. 
but the paint also isn't completely dry. Hmm. Not sure that I would recommend that method. Nope. It didn't come off clean. Not at all. All right. So now I'm going to end up having to clean this off, remask it, respray it. It was worth a try. Fun little experiment. Do not recommend the chapstick method. Try something else. Masking tape works pretty darn well. All right, keep on going. All right, folks, been a couple days. Time to get back at it. I painted the one wheel. I was really happy with the way it turned out. I think it's gonna look awesome on my car. So I uh, took the tires off of the wheels, made a different video out of doing that the other day. And now I'm back at it. So I'm gonna get these wheels ready to go to the tire shop. I'm gonna have the existing tires taken off of the Firebird and installed onto these wheels after these wheels are ready. But first I gotta clean them up and get them painted. So I got myself some 400 grit sandpaper. It's also waterproof sandpaper so I can uh, soak it in water and do a little bit of wet sanding. I'm gonna look for any um, high spots, any burrs on the, on the finished parts. And then I also bought some polishing compound and some polishing discs for my Dremel to go over the, the shiny parts. So let's take a look. Now this wheel is the worst of the four. This one's got a little bit of road rash around here. I'm gonna hit that with some sandpaper, just rub that out, make it smooth. Um, just gonna look inside for any kind of little nicks, burrs, anything that needs to just be cleaned up. Like right here is a little bit. I can clean that with some sandpaper. Um, maybe you have to grind it a little bit with a file or something, but sand that out. And then I'm just gonna hit everything, all the metal with um, the Dremel with some polishing compound before I go ahead and clean everything real good with a power washer. I'll probably sand these inside areas just a little bit, just to scuff them up and clean them up. And from there, we'll go ahead and power wash everything and get it painted, get it ready to go off to the tire shop so I can get these mounted on the car. So here we go. Okay, so aluminum tends to be pretty soft and forgiving when it comes to working with it. As you can see, I've already, just using a little bit of 400 grit sandpaper, I've already rubbed out a bunch of this curb rash right here. Now I'm gonna keep going over here and I'm just doing it dry right now. I want a little bit more friction, but then when I wanna get it uh, a smoother polish, then I'm gonna get the sandpaper wet and use that. And then I'll use some rubbing compound with a Dremel with a polishing disc and just get it all the way buffed out. So right now I'm just going back and forth sanding trying to get the high spots out, even it out with the low spots so it looks a little more uniform and it's not so noticeable that the car hit a curb. All right, I got the curb brush pretty well sanded out. I'll hit the rest of that up with the polishing wheel on the Dremel. So now I've just got little pieces of sandpaper. I was gonna get it wet. I think I'm actually gonna keep it dry. So the, the castings on these, you can see there's some pretty, pretty rough castings. Just the way the wheels were built back then, it's, they weren't made like real pretty and precise with their casting. So since I'm painted anyway, I don't care that much, but some of this really high funky stuff, I'm trying to sand it out a little bit. So I'm just taking some sanding paper and just rubbing it in there and trying to take the high stuff down. Uh, any kind of dips or anything, I don't care. It's just gonna get primer and paint on it anyway. But I just wanna try to smooth out anything really noticeably high, any big imperfections as I go along before I paint these. So you just want to sand that out a little bit. I don't I don't need it to be perfect, but I don't need it to look terrible either. Okay, now that the wheel's sanded, I'm gonna polish the raised areas, the ones that are gonna stay shiny silver. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply some polish and hit them with the Dremel. So for polish, I got some Blue Magic uh, Metal Polish Cream. And the way I'm gonna do this, I'm just gonna get some on my finger and I'm gonna rub it on the wheel everywhere that, I, that I'm gonna polish. So it's gonna be this, this outside lip, the spokes, and then this center round ring. Everything else is gonna be painted black. So I don't care how smooth and shiny it is. So I'm just gonna spread polish everywhere that's gonna get hit with the Dremel. And then once I've got it all spread out, then I'll, let, then I'll turn the Dremel on and actually start polishing. Okay, I got the uh, polishing compound spread everywhere that I'm gonna polish. And I've got two different polishing um, bits for the Dremel. 
I got this big disc and I'm gonna use that one on the spokes. It tends to fit down in there real nice, gets down into these curves. And then to go around the outside area, got more of a pointed little one. So that'll fit like up inside this, uh, this crevice right here and really work your way around. Plus you can get that nice and flat up against the outside rim and get it nice and polished where you can do that with the other one too, but this seems to work a little bit better. So two different Dremel bits, going to go ahead and get started. So these wheels are actually in pretty good shape. I don't need to go crazy with it. All I'm really wanting to do is just buff it out, try to get any little imperfections, maybe smooth out just a little bit, shine everything up a little, get some scratches out of it. I don't need to go crazy. This is not the look I'm going for anyway. I'm not going for a spit shine chrome look. This car is uh, it's built to look like a hot rod, like a, a vintage hot rod. And that's what these wheels are really gonna complete that look and give it that, that tough vintage hot rod look. Okay, I got the wheels all polished up, sanded, cleaned up, everything needs to be done. Now I'm gonna power wash them, get them real nice and clean, get them ready to uh, mask and paint. Then we'll be ready to take them to the tire shop. So we're almost done, home stretch. All right, we're getting towards the end of the road here. Got the wheels power washed, got them all rinsed off, did a little hand scrubbing, used some simple green, scrubbed the fronts, the backs. You know, they're not perfect, but they're, uh, they're vintage wheels. They're, made in the 70s or the 80s i'm not exactly sure there's, there's not a lot of information out there about these to determine when they were made or anything like that what year it's the best i can determine is 70s or 80s so they're almost ready um gonna let them dry overnight i'll probably blow them off in the morning with the air hose just to double check let them bake in the sun a little bit then i'll mask them off and get them sprayed down it's supposed to be a nice hot dry day tomorrow first dry day we've had in a while let them bake in the sun all day and uh, get them ready to take over to the tire store. So here's how they look. Looking pretty good, pretty clean. So they're about ready for masking and painting. I think they're gonna look pretty sharp. All right, I'm gonna hang it up for tonight and we'll get back at it tomorrow. I'll show you how I'm gonna mask them, spray them down, take the paint off and they'll be ready to go. Good night. Hello YouTube. All right, back at it again today. Now we're going to start masking these wheels off. Uh, I did notice now that they dried overnight, I've got like watermarks on them and I noticed that the polish, maybe there was a clear coat on the aluminum. I'm kind of concerned about that. It, it almost looks like the aluminum got damaged a little bit. You can see watermarks, but you can also see where the polish almost looks like it might have taken off some of the finish like there was a clear coat or something and i'm kind of concerned about that i'm i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna mask them and then after i paint them i'll try to polish it up a little bit by hand but i sure hope i didn't uh, damage these wheels by by polishing them the way i did uh, that would be a real bummer if that's if that's the case so hopefully this uh little hand polish will smooth it out and make it look okay again it, be really bummed out if I ended up ruining these after all the expense and work that I put into them. Anyway, we're gonna start masking. So my masking technique, I'm just using some uh, Scotch brand tape and I'm gonna mask the spoke parts first. Then I'll just go around this circle, go around the outside rim. And then what I'm gonna do is so the tape overlaps over top of the spokes. It's gonna overlap everywhere, it's thicker. It's too tough to try to line it up right along the edge. So what I'm gonna do is lay my tape down and then just use a razor blade and, and just cut along the edges and cut the tape so it'll be just a nice blue outline of what needs to not be painted. Then I'll go ahead and spray it. When the paint's all dry, I'll just pull the tape off. So we're gonna go ahead and keep um, keep spray or keep masking off the tape and I'll, then I'll show you how I'm gonna cut it with the razor right, blade. Got everything taped up. So what I did is I did all the spokes, did the center ring, did the outer ring, and then I just ran my finger along and pushed it down real nice and tight to the edges. Now I'm just gonna use a razor blade and I'm gonna score along the edges here and just peel the tape as I go to get a nice crisp line. All right, I got my razor. 
And it's just as simple as running it down the line here. You might catch a edge on the aluminum. So if you do, you can just go back the other direction. It's not that big a deal. And I'm trying to hold the camera with one hand, but it helps if you hold the tape in one hand and hold the razor in the other hand. So kind of peel the tape as you go. Um, but I'd have to let go of the camera to do that. All right, got all four wheels masked up. Gonna hit them with some paint now. Got some uh, paint and primer all in one. Satin black is the look I'm gonna go for. Didn't want to go with a matte, but also didn't want to go with a high gloss. So we'll go with the satin. Here's the wheels all masked up. Spray them down, see how this turns out. All right, YouTube, here's where we're at with the wheels. Got them painted, got the masking tape pulled off. Now I just need to go through and I'm gonna polish up the metal just a little bit. Any water spots or anything, just get it out. But they're about ready to go to the, um, the shop to have the tires pulled off the other wheels and put onto these, get them put on the car. I'll be sure to take some before and after pictures of the car with the old wheels and with the new wheels and see what the difference is, see how it turns out. I think these are really going to look awesome. Um, we'll keep on going with it. All right, YouTube, we are back and it's pretty much the end of the road for these uh, wheel restoration and the whole process. I dropped them off at the tire store today, or not tire store, but a local garage. They had a tire machine, so they took the tires that were on the Firebird off and put them on the new wheels balanced them for me and i just got them back so that's how it looks looks pretty good now one thing i did also want to point out i ended up getting some uh what do they call hub centric rings so these particular wheels they're you know they use a shank style lug nut instead of like a conical style and you don't always get the best fit because the, the factory wheels are designed to be centric on the hub. Well, being aftermarket wheels, the hub hole on these is much larger than the actual hub on the vehicle. And the old steel wheels, they fit perfectly on the hub. So they sell these rings called hub centric rings. And as got on Summit, I measured uh, what, the, what my diameter was on the hub and then on the wheel, including the center cap and I found ones that fit awfully close, and then I just took them down, took a, I had to shave a little bit of material off, just using a belt sander, no big deal. So that's gonna take these wheels and make them a little bit more of a, a hub-centric wheel versus just being on the lug nuts. And hopefully that gives you a little bit better ride quality, that everything seems to fit a little bit better, and if nothing else, it makes it easier for the lug nuts to go on. Otherwise, you've got a situation where they, the wheel is like sitting on the stud as you're trying to get the shank style lug nut up in the hole. And that's not always so fun. So this should make the process a little bit easier. So we're gonna go ahead and put the wheels on and see how this thing looks. Unfortunately, it's pouring rain, so I'm not gonna pull the car out of the garage after the wheels are on, but we can at least get a look at it and see how it looks in the garage. All right, here we go. Here's some final shots of the old Rally 2 wheels versus the American Racing Vector wheels. The old ones obviously on the top, the new ones on the bottom. And here's one last glamour shot of the final product. This is after I got the custom made center caps. Um, I had stickers or decals made to put on the center caps. I went with the metallic silver and then with black lettering for the American Racing words. I really think it makes the wheels pop and just you know, love the way these wheels look on the car. It gives the car a nice, polished, vintage, hot rod look to it. And that's really the look I've gone after on this car. So I'm really excited about the way these turned out. I uh, hope this video really helps out anybody that wants to uh, restore some aluminum wheels or some Eric Racing wheels. And I hope this gives you some tips and tricks that helps you along the way on your project. Anyway, thanks for watching. 
Uh, like our comment, give us a like, comment, especially give us, most importantly, subscribe to us. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye.